Hey guys, what's up? Brent Kelmer from Blue Water VST. This is number nine in our series on Native Instruments Reactors Massive. And this is the wrap up edition. And so I wanted to show you something that I think will be useful in your productions and kind of enlightening as, as far as how to use Massive. What we're going to do is take individual pieces of snapshots and put them together into a loop of our own creation. And so let's start over here. Now, before I show you this, though, I want to show you that there is this output section. Uh, if you scroll over, come down here and scroll over, go over to the right. This output section allows you to output masses, uh, various sequencer tracks in different ways. So you can master out stereo, which which uh, outputs all the sound to one uh, to one track, or you can split them up individually, which a lot of people like to do, and just on this drop down select individual outs, and then it will go one, two, three, four, five, six. Read the manual on this; it's it's uh, a pretty comprehensive. I want to just stick with master out stereo because I think this is a much easier way of doing what we're about to do. Now take this snapshot for example. I have that solo. This is the entire snapshot. Oops. But I like this. I like this kind of ride cymbal pattern. And I just want to record that one piece into an audio track so that I can use it with other sounds. So I'm going to come over here to our audio track that I've created here and um, I have this pre-selected but what you'll do is in audio from come down to reactor 5 and uh, you'll have to select the monitor and set it to in and then you'll arm this for recording now I've turned down the track volume just because I don't want to hear the signal twice but your uh, indication that this is actually accepting the data is that this meter will show a signal Right, on the audio from and then of course in here too. So let's arm, this is arm for recording and now we're just going to record maybe a four bar uh, section of this. So here we go. And I click on this and you can see that the wave data is being recorded in real time. So now we have uh, just a shade over four bars. I've stopped the recording. I'm going to click the monitor back to auto and I'm going to come down here to our uh, loop settings and just type in 400 zero, zero, so that we have an even four bars and then we'll bring this endpoint back. And uh, so now this is what we have. Oops, my volume turned down. I forgot to turn it back up. So now we've successfully recorded that. That and that alone, which is kind of cool. Okay, so the second snapshot I want to use is called Snuggle. I, again, I don't know where they come up with these names. It's Bank 1 Snapshot 10. Now I have to come back here and turn my reactor track back on because I think I uh, turned it off here. Oh, it's soloed. Okay, so now if we solo this, this is the whole snapshot. There's this one sound I like, which is this rim down here. Now we can audition this against our other sound, right? I like the way that sounds. Maybe pan one to one side. See how the stereo separation might affect it. Well, let's record this second one. Okay, so I'm going to come up here to our third audio track and click on no input so it's not accepting that input anymore. Come over here and we'll do the same thing as we did on uh, the first occasion. Turn this to on. Arm the track. Uh, turn down the volume just so we're not hearing it twice. And we're off to the races. All right, now we have loop number two. So we'll go back here, and we can also just drag these uh, loop brace endpoint to five instead of coming down here to the loop dialog. And uh, of course, turn this back to auto. Turn the volume up. Turn this off. And now we have this, right? So it's starting to form kind of a cool top loop. You get that idea. I'm going to show you now what you can go ahead and do with these. Time to add a little melodic action to our mix here. Now in the interest of time, I've used the same technique that I've shown you 
just to uh, render this kind of housey chord sound. I'll show you. I'll show you in uh, Reactor. It's this uh, snapshot uh, 12 of the second bank. It's called the Animal Song, and uh, this is what it sounds like as rendered to the loop. Kind of a housey chord, housey stabs, right? In our mix, it sounds like this. Kind of a cool sound, right? Let's let's put a drum loop in here though, so we can get a point of reference like four four uh, kick pattern. Now I'm going to come over here and use a loop from this Alex Nigamon. I call it House Loop Masters pack. This is a fantastic pack. At the end of this video, a, a coupon code will appear that will allow you to go to Loop Masters and get 10% off of your purchase. And in the interest of full disclosure, I am a Loop Masters affiliate, which means that if you click through and purchase something, I may get a small commission of it. But you should know that I never recommend anything that I don't really believe in, and this is a fantastic pack. In fact, as you'll see later on, this pack is worth having if only for the bass loops that are included. But right now, let's take this uh, drum loop 9. I'm going to drag this in just an, an open audio track, and we'll get a sense for how this sounds. Kind of a nice bouncy uh, kick drum pattern. But that house chord isn't really falling where I want it to be, right? So I'm going to come in here and take this start point and start moving it around until I get what I want. And it's still not quite there. I don't want to get maybe more. There. there, it's getting there. Kind of like that, right? So you can kind of go through here and, and really zoom in and get exactly what you want. That's just about where I want it. So now, you know, it's not processed at all because I kind of just recorded it as a dry signal. So I could come over, say, to our audio effects in live and come to maybe want some reverb on this, right? Um, room ambience medium. So we'll drag that over the track and uh, that's a little bit much, right? Let's try back though. And you can alter the dry wet. That's starting to get a little more there, right? So you see what the possibilities are here. I mean, you can you can record these loops as completely dry, or you can include some of the uh, processing that that Massive will do for you in terms of uh, the delay and so forth. And then you can process them afterward. So a lot of flexibility. Now I finally want to show you a, a third thing. Okay, so to wrap up, I just want to give you a sense of the directions in which you can go using this technique of taking pieces from individual snapshots in Reactor and pairing them up with sounds, say, from other sample packs. And I go back to this Alex Nigamon sample pack and uh, just taking a stroll through some of the music loops. You hear that there, there's a wide variety. There's one that I like here called this deep voices. So if we pair this up with the groove we already have, and I'm going to take out the house chords just so we have a cleaner mix, this is what you would get. So already the bass is a fantastic groove, right? And there's no reason you couldn't bring in one of these other ones. More of a deep house vibe, maybe. And this is, this is really using these loops at their most basic. Uh, you know, you can chop these up, you can, you, can, you can slice them to MIDI, you can transpose them, you can alter the start point. There's really no limit to what you can do with these or how you can process them. And just to, to, uh, to leave you with something that I really like, there's a bass loop in here that just kills me. It's this last one, I think, 39. I drag this in and you can hear it. Just so, so funky. This just cries out for something like auto filter, right? So you come over to your auto filter, drag it into this track, maybe put on a high pass, and then just. So, really, the sky's the limit with this stuff. Uh, I encourage you to get in to use that reactor technique that I showed you to, to pick out pieces of individual snapshots. And then, and then use sample packs such as this one. Uh, slice it up, dice it up, get a sound that really hits you. Um, 
and the sky's the limit with this stuff. Again, guys, thanks for joining me. This is this has been the ninth in our series on Native Instruments Reactors Massive. As always, uh, please come to bluewatervst.com, and if you have not done so already, uh, sign up and get uh, the reactor compressor called Compassion. It's a fantastic piece of kit. And of course, as always, you can also email me, and I'll try and get back to you within 24 hours. I really appreciate you watching this, and I'll talk to you again real soon. Thank you.